Hi, I'm Bill Fields and welcome to another rousing edition of Emulex Chalk Talk. The topic for today is going to be configuring a converged network adapter on a Windows Server platform. Some of the things that we want to talk about, you'll find similarities between what you've been doing traditionally with respect to configuring your network and configuring your back-end storage adapter to what you're doing today. So as we go through this process, I think you'll find those similarities and you'll understand that even though the convergence happens within the network point and the server point, that the management functionality and the feature functionality of your traditional networks with Ethernet and fiber channel have been preserved. So essentially what we're doing is we're going from installing two separate adapters, I've got a NIC card here and a fiber channel HBA here, to physically installing one single converged network adapter into your server. This is the Emulex OCE 10100. This is a 10 gigabit enhanced Ethernet card capable of carrying FCOE or iSCSI traffic. In this case, we're concerned more about fiber channel over Ethernet. So take a look real quickly at the steps we're going to go through, and I think this is where you'll start to see the similarities. The server installation, the card physical installation, once that card is installed in the server, and I'll go over to a host and I'll show you what this looks like once it's in by going through device manager and the management utilities, that once the card's installed, we'll cable it up to our appropriate switch, we'll install a NIC driver, we'll install a fiber channel driver, and we'll be able to treat this just like we've been treating our traditional systems with separate NIC cards and HBAs. So I threw up here just a quick example of what a typical topology looks like. These boxes on the bottom are just representing some hosts. I wanted to give it just a little bit more than a single server view here. We install one card in the individual hosts, and as you'll notice, the OCE is a dual ported card. So in this case, we have cabling to individual switches for redundancy and multipath capability. We connect these into our FCOE enabled switches, which are essentially 10 gigabit enhanced Ethernet. We want to make sure that FCOE is enabled on the ports that we're attaching these to. So this is really where we begin to see our convergence point, either within the switch or within the server. And we could look at this as all being part of one specific rack or one specific bay of servers, if you will. From there, we can uplink our switches to our traditional LAN and to our traditional fiber channel switch infrastructure. From the LAN, of course, we have our connectivity out to the cloud, which really represents connecting to the rest of the world. And then on the fiber channel switch side, we're attaching to a traditional fiber channel storage array. So with respect to what we're putting in for cards, the cabling differences and the capability of the switches, Yes, certainly that's where the differences lie because we want to make sure that we have that functionality within the switch that we're connecting to. But once we have the card installed into the server, I think what you'll see is the similarities in the preservation of the management and functionality. So with that, I'm going to take a walk over to a system. I'm going to go over to the host and I'm going to launch server manager and go into device manager. And if you'll take a look, we'll see that under network adapters, we have what appear to be two individual NIC cards installed. These are representing each port of that one connect adapter. And in addition to that, like we would normally do when installing a fiber channel HBA, under storage controllers, we also see the one connect adapter there. And there's our fiber channel portion. So now that we have the card installed and recognized by the host, the next step is to go in and to install the drivers. So just let me give you a, a quick bit of direction on where to go to find the correct driver packages. So I go over to emulex.com and I've clicked on downloads. I'll go select the Emulex branded card and you'll see right at the top we have a section called One Connect UCNAs. I can click directly. This is really just a shortcut for us to get to this One Connect uh, UCNA drivers page we'll, where we will see we have listed the um, currently released driver packages. So in this instance, we're concerned about Windows. We have two driver packages here. We have the Enterprise Management Application or with Core. So if you want command line only for Windows Server Core, this is the package you would download. But in our case, we're using a full Windows Server um, package, so we'll grab it with the Enterprise Management Application. A couple of other points to make here is with respect to the driver package itself. 
So I'm looking at a store port driver. And as I go down under the supported protocol section, you'll see a list where it says compatible FCHBAs, compatible UCNAs, and CNAs. Notice that this driver package is the same package you would load for an LP9000 1 gig adapter, a 2 gig, a 4 gig, or an 8 gig adapter, which really helps streamline the driver qualification process within your organization. And then, of course, I have listed here the LP21000, which is our first gen converged network adapter, and the card that we've installed here, which is the OCE10102. So I'll scroll down. You can see we have all of our documentation here. Um, the full driver kit includes my FC, FCOE, iSCSI, and Ethernet drivers, as well as the One Command Manager Enterprise application. That is version 5.0 of what you traditionally know uh, as HB Anywhere. So I can go ahead and download that. That will bring me down a package in a Tarma installer kit called Autopilot Installer. Once I click on Autopilot Installer, it will run a self-extracting archive and then uh, guide me through a series of prompts where it will recognize the adapters installed and allow me to uh, select driver and management application installation. So once we've done that, I would go to my host and I would get into One Command Manager. So now with One Command Manager, let me just kind of bring these down here for a second. I have my Windows server here with my One Connect uh, OCE adapter in it. And when I click on it, I see I have port 0 and port 1. Um, and under each port are two represented entities. One indicated by the NIC logo here provides me with a MAC address, and then the other with the FCOE icon here with my worldwide port name. Now, just as you're familiar with HB Anywhere, One Command Manager is, you know, again, just a, a newer version of uh, HB Anywhere, which allows for the management of multiple entities, right? We're not just concerned with fiber channel HBAs now. We're dealing with um, Converge Network Adapters and, of course, our Gen 2 UCNA, which covers both NIC and FCOE. So if I click on FCOE, and if you're familiar with managing Emulex adapters, you'll see that a lot of the similarities, actually it's all the same. We manage the fiber channel portion of this card just like we always have. We can go into driver parameters and I can demonstrate that the same parameters, capabilities, and um, management practices apply. Now in this case, this is indicated by red, meaning that I have a link down status, but I can go to another host that actually does have a link up situation and you'll see that that FCOE logo does turn to green. So with that let's go back to the board and uh, recap where we are at this point. Okay so to recap where we are at this point we've taken the card we've installed it in the server we've identified that the card is representing itself as both a NIC adapter and a uh, fiber channel HBA to the server. We've installed our NIC and our fiber channel drivers and reviewed the connectivity component through One Command Manager. If you haven't done this already, and this depends on you know, how, how you like to manage things, some people like to provision for beforehand, some people like to provision afterwards, um, your SAN component, your connectivity into the FCOE enabled switch, sometimes people run into a situation where they haven't actually enabled FCOE on the port, so you want to make sure you do that. Zoning practices remain the same, storage configuration practices remain the same. So once you can sit down on that host and you can gain access to the LUNs that you're trying to connect to, then you can go ahead and install your multi-pathing I.O. components or your um, virtual disk service capability as well. So with Emulex Chalk Talk, I'm Bill Fields. I hope this information was helpful.